few uh, much of the first few um items there on the list I'll, I'll just i'll fly through them pretty quickly so we're going to future value and present value uh, the time it takes an investment to double the net present value annuities monthly rates mortgages balloon payments which came up in 2019 uh, and we have a look at the amortization schedule and then something uh, quite new is first order difference equations um uh, they are now appearing on the uh, Leaving Cert higher level uh, applied maths um, course, and we can apply these first order difference equations to uh, loan repayments and mortgages. So that's something something different, something new. Okay, okay. So we 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 begin with with Einstein, and uh, he seemed to have a lot uh, to say on this matter. And I think he called compound interest uh, the eighth wonder of the world because of the way it uh, it, it grew so quickly. Um, so if you invested something at a compound interest rate, uh, then it seemed uh, to uh, grow pretty quickly as time uh, went by. And of course, that growth is exponential as well. Now, so the prior knowledge that uh, the students need uh, to tackle these uh, questions. They know, need to know about uh, geometric sequences and series, and in particular geometric series. So they're going to need that formula there, Sn equals A times 1 minus R to the N all over 1 minus R, and a little knowledge of logs as well. Um, so the definition of a log, of course, um, we have there A to the B equals C in index form, and the equivalent form in log form in log to the base A of C is equal to B. And then this third rule of logs, uh, the log of uh, c to the n to the base a is n times the log of c to the base a. So that's really the only prior knowledge uh, required for uh, the uh, financial maths. So we'll start off with uh, the definitions of uh, future value and present value. So the future value of um, a payment is given by f is equal to p times 1 plus i to the t where f is your future value, p is the present value, i is the rate of interest as a decimal, and t, of course, is the number of uh, compounding periods, time, in other words. Uh, and that, of course, can be measured in uh, normally in months, but also years. Um, now, the other important concept is that of present value. So when future values are discounted back, so if you know the future value, or if you if you want, uh, for example, you would like to have maybe 10,000 euro in two years time to buy a car or whatever, uh, then you would like to know what the present value of that 10,000 euro is. So you'll know what to invest uh, in order to uh, in order to achieve that 10,000 euro in 10 or in two years time. So the present value then is just a manipulation of the first formula. Uh, F, P is equal to F all over one plus I uh, to the T. Okay. Now, so let's take an example of a uh, future value. So we have 2,300 euro deposited in the account and it earns uh, an annual equivalent rate of 2%. What will the investment amount to in five years time? So again, we have our formula, F is equal to P times one plus I to the T. P is, uh, of course, the present value, the amount we're depositing at this moment in time, 2,300. Uh, the rate of interest is 0 0.02 as a decimal. And the time period or the number of compounding periods is five years. So T equals five. And then we just substitute that into our formula and out comes 2,539 euro and 39 cent. So that's future value. Now, present value. Uh, so this is where we are looking for the present value of some future payments. So what is the present value of 84,000 to be received or paid in five years time? and discounted at a rate of 11% per annum. So our present value formula, F all over uh, one plus I to the T, where F is the future value. In this case, that's 84,253. Uh, the rate of interest is a decimal is 0 0.11 times five years. And we substitute and we arrive at the figure of 50,000 uh, euro. So if we invest 50,000 euro now, uh, that will accumulate to 84,253 euros in five years time if the rate of interest is 11%. So there, that's uh, future and uh, present. Now, this uh, concept of the um, time it takes for an investment uh, to double. So uh, if you're doing logs at the moment with the students are 
Um, I did them a few weeks ago, uh, maybe a month ago now, and um, this is with fifth years and we didn't have any financial maths done, uh, but they had some knowledge of the future value formula. So we were able to, using logs, able to find out uh, the length of time it takes in investment to double in, uh, in value. So the concept is, is straightforward enough. Your future value um, uh, formula again is equal to P times one plus I to the T. So if we're going to invest P, uh, invest P euros here, there's P euros, we want that to double. So we want the future value to be two P if the investment itself is P. Uh, and then we're looking for the time for that to happen. So um, 1.07 uh, 1.07 t then is equal to 2 by dividing both sides of the equation by p and then we uh, convert the index form here into log form so that's log to the base 1.07 of 2 is equal to t and giving us uh, 10.24 uh, years uh, the amount of time it takes uh, the investment uh, to double okay so there's a lot of discussion uh, can be had around uh, that so uh, for example does it matter uh, how much you invest, uh, is the doubling time going to change because of the value of your investment? And of course, the answer is no. So I, you would always start off, of course, with particular values. So uh, if the initial investment is 10,000, how long is it going to take to get to 20,000? How many years? Uh, and of course, eventually you end up uh, talking about how the uh, doubling time would change. And of course, the only influence on the doubling time really uh, is the rate of uh, interest to seven percent there. Uh, okay, so that's doubling time. Now the uh, next uh, concept is that of net present uh, value, um, and as it says there, it's the difference between the present value of cash inflows and the present value of cash outflows over a period of time. Um, so, for example, if you wanted to invest in some uh, business or some venture or other. Um, and you had a certain amount of money available to you um, and from your investment then sometime in the future you would get uh, inflows of cash and you want to find out whether your investment is uh, worthwhile or not or whether you should invest or not. So basically what it amounts to is we need to get the present value of all the outflows, the money we're pumping into this business and then we need to get the present value of all the inflows, the cash that we're getting from it. And then the difference between the two of them is the net present value. And we can see that if the net present value is greater than zero, so we have a positive net present value, uh, we would invest in the business. And if it's less than zero, do not invest. So we'll see a, a particular example of that now. So here we have a um, uh, present series. Oh, sorry, this is the formula, first of all. So if, if you have... Um, a series of cash flows that you're going to get in the future. Okay, so in one year, in one year's time, let's say you're going to uh, uh, get F uh, one euros, then F two euros in two years time and so on. And if we want to get the present value of all those cash flows, then it's just calculating the present value of each one of them uh, separately. So F one over one plus I, F two over one plus I squared and so on. And as you can see, that's a, that's a geometric um, series. So it's, uh, it's easy to, to sum that using our geometric series formula. And that will give us the net present value of a series of cash flows. So let's see how we apply that now to net present value. So I've taken a specific example here. So uh, the first uh, amount here, the I1, is the amount uh, an amount you would invest now at this present time. Okay. Uh, I2 would be an amount you would invest in a year's time. And then in two years' time, you'd get this inflow uh, of cash. Um, F1. And then in, in three years time, you would get this one and so on. And in uh, two years time, you're getting this one here. Okay. So the outlay is the first two, which are negative, And the inflow then are the other ones here. So these are your inflows and these are your outflows. So basically what it amounts to then is, is summing the inflows using a geometric uh, series and similarly summing the, summing the outflows and adding together then, and if this comes out to be positive, then um, you it's you may invest, you could invest, but it would be if it comes out to be negative, obviously it's a bad idea uh, to invest in the in the business. So let's look at a specific example. So so here we have somebody has fifty thousand euro 
uh, at hand to invest in a business at this moment in time. And in a year's time, they'll be able to come up with 10,000. And then the business has promised them 15,000 uh, of an inflow in two years time, 20,000 in three years time, and 35,000 in four years time. And what we want to do now is figure out whether this is a good investment or not. So we calculate the net present value uh, of the outflows and the net present value of uh, the inflow. So our first outflow here was the uh, 50,000, which is a negative, it's an outflow. And then this 10,000, which is going to be invested in a year's time, that is a present value of 10,000 divided by 1.05 to the power of one. And then these are our inflows here. These are our inflows, so we need the present value of those as well. Now, this 15,000 isn't going to be paid for two years, so its present value is 15,000 divided by 1.02 to be squared. This one is 20,000 divided by 1.05 to be cubed, because that uh, uh, won't arrive for uh, three years. And similarly, then with the last one, it's 35,000 divided by 1.05 uh, to the power of four. So we calculate each of those individually. And we have the minus 50,000 here, the minus 9,000 here. These are our outflows. And here then are our inflows. And we come up with a positive 152.97. Uh, so a question you might ask is, where does this interest rate of uh, 5% come from? Well, that would be the cost um, of um, uh, the cost of borrowing say let's say this 10,000 that's normally the interest rate they would use um, because if you look at that 10,000 uh, that's uh, not due for another year so you could actually uh, invest uh, this 9,523 at the present market rate and have your 10,000 in a year's time to invest in the business so it's normally that uh, five percent that's used and it's often this thing is then is often used as well to um, compare investments so what's the best place to put your uh, put your money. So if you have 50,000 now and you can invest 10,000 years time, uh, you can make, you can use this as a method of comparing two different ventures or two different uh, businesses. Okay, and we can, we can also do this, of course, uh, on Excel. Um, and with Excel, right, um, Excel can calculate uh, present values of, of payments for you. And uh, if we look at what we have here now, um, up here on the top in cell E2, I have the rate of interest. Okay, the discounting rate. Year zero, we're investing 50,000, so that's a negative. And year one, then we're investing 10,000. Okay, so if we calculate then the present value of the 10,000 plus the 50,000, that will give us our total outflow in present value terms. And down here, uh, I've shown you the formula. Uh, the formula in Excel is NPV to calculate present uh, value. And um, so the in here, the dollar A, dollar two refers to the 0 0.05 up here in cell A2. We have dollar signs around it there because it's absolute. We don't want that to change uh, as we uh, calculate our, our um, present values. That stays constant, right? C3, of course, then is the, where the 10,000 is. So basically, we're getting the present value of the 10,000. And then we're adding on what's in C2, which is the 50,000. So that, that there then gives us our, our outflows, the present value of our outflows. And similarly then for the inflows, so there's no inflow the first year, right? If you can remember back when we looked at the, at the table, there was no inflow the first year. The first inflow came the second year, okay? The third inflow came in the third year. And then the next one was the 35,000, the fourth year. So what we need to do here then, of course, is calculate the present value of these four. And again, here's our formula for doing it. Net NPV equals NPV, our interest rate here, the A dollar, dollar A dollar uh, two. And then we're going from D3 to D6. So D3 to D6 is this range of values here. We want to get the present value of all of those. That goes into, uh, as the arrow's pointing there, that gives us 59,676 and minus 59,223.81 for our outflows, giving us the 152.97 that we achieved uh, manually. So we can use Excel as well to do this kind of, this kind of calculation. Okay. Right, so um, the next topic then I suppose, uh, um, annuities, and we will be looking at the different types of annuity, but 
first of all, what is an annuity? It's a series of equal payments made at equal intervals. So uh, we can take pensions as an example, mortgages, these are all annuities where um, payments are made at regular intervals. And there are two types of um, annuity. There's the ordinary annuity, okay? And then there's the annuity due. And the only difference really is uh, the time at which the payments are made. So for an ordinary annuity, the payment is made at the end of each payment period. So uh, for example, there, if your annuity has monthly intervals, it will be made, at, the payments will be made at the end of each month. Um, so examples of that would include income annuities and dividend payments. So if you've uh, invested in a company uh, or you've bought shares, I should say, in a, in a company, private or public, um, so you're, you're entitled to dividends and these are usually made at the end of uh, the period. So are usually made at the end of each quarter. So they would be ordinary um, annuities. And the other type of annuity then is the um, annuity due, and that's made at the beginning of each interval. Um, so uh, an example here would be a rent payment, because as you know, when you're paying uh, rent, um, that's made, uh, that payment is made at the start of the month. So the, uh, you're paying it out at the start and the landlord is receiving it at the start of the, the month as well. Uh, so that's an example of an annuity due. And this diagram then uh, gives you an idea of the payments and when they take place. So we have our ordinary annuity here. You can see the first payment they are made at the end of the, of the period, end of the month, let's say, second one and so on. And then the nth payment is made here at uh, the end of the nth month. Whereas with the uh, annuity due, they're made at the start. So there you have the first payment at the beginning of the month, the second payment at the beginning of the second month, and so on. And of course, the last payment then made at the beginning of uh, the uh, nth month or the end of the nth minus month month. So it's just, uh, that's just, the, that's the basic difference between uh, um, an ordinary annuity and an annuity uh, due. No. Uh, I find this uh, a good one um, to do with the students, uh, even though it's not uh, as such going to be examined. But uh, as you know, the uh, amortization formula, the derivation of that is examinable. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a tricky enough derivation, uh, whereas these ones are uh, simple enough and a good lead in to it. Uh, and again, the only <coughs> formula required here is the sum 10 terms of a geometric. <coughs> so here is our uh, ordinary um, here's our ordinary annuity. So the first payment is made at the, uh, we see here at the end of the month. So um, there's no interest accruing from that. Whereas the, this one um, you see is going to be there for one month. So it's going to, its future value is going to be eight times one plus i to the power of one uh, and so on, right down to the last one here, which is a times one plus i to the n minus one. Um, okay, so really that's the first, that's the first payment, um, but I have it written it the other way, so it's, it's easier to apply the, the formula to it when it's written in the uh, other direction. Okay, so here we have a very simple uh, geometric again uh, with a ratio of one plus i, and we have n terms. Uh, sometimes I get confused with that because of the n minus one, but remember there are n terms here. Uh, so substituting then into our geometric formula here, a being the first term and then one minus one plus i to the uh, n, we have n terms all over 1 minus 1 plus i, and out comes a times 1 plus i to the n minus 1 all over i. So that's the future value of a series of n recurring uh, payments on annuities. And again, the next one up uh, is um, doing the um, annuity due. Okay, <clears throat> so remember uh, the annuity due is at the start of the month. So this, uh, as you can see, is is going to earn an interest, whereas in the previous one, it didn't uh, earn an interest because the, it was made at the end of the month. This is made at the start of the month. Um, and then similar then to the other one, um, we get the future values of all the payments. And we, again, we have N here in payments in total. And uh, substituting then into our SN formula, here's our first term, A times one plus I, and then by one minus the ratio to the, to the N, one plus I to the N all over one minus one plus i, all over one minus the ratio, and out comes this. So there, 
there are two um, nice and easy ones to uh, get started on before doing the amortization. So <clears throat> we'll have a look now at, uh, because obviously in, in most scenarios, you're given an AER or an APR, you're given the annual uh, rate. And um, the first thing you need to do, of course, uh, in order to calculate uh, be that the payments or whatever is to, is to find the monthly rates. Um, so this is just an example from, a, you probably uh, remember from an exam paper a few years ago. Uh, Donna is arranging a loan and is examining two different uh, repayment options. So the first, uh, the first one here is the, the one that the, that, that's normally asked. Bank B will charge him a rate that is equivalent to an APR of 4.5%. And we're to find correct to three significant figures, the monthly interest rate that is equivalent to an APR of 4.5%. So we begin again with our uh, formula, the famous formula, f is equal to p times 1 plus i to the t. Now what we'll do is we look at the future uh, value of 1 euro, in, uh, an investment of 1 euro. So there's our 1 euro. If the rate of interest, uh, the APR is 4.5%, then uh, that's going to have a future value of 1.045. And our time, uh, our compounding periods is 12 because it's, it's over the year and we're looking for the monthly um, rate. So plugging into the formula then, uh, one is our P, so one times one plus I to the power of 12, we're looking for this I here, uh, is equal to 1.045. So we're pushing the, the one euro forward over 12 compounding periods, uh, and we know that it has to amount to 1.045. Uh, so that gives us 1 plus i then is the 12th root of 1.045 and giving us i as 0 0.00367. So that's our, that's, our monthly, that's our monthly rate. And that rate is equivalent to uh, an APR of 4.5%. That uh, is equivalent to an APR of 4.5%. Because sometimes uh, banks will offer interest, different interest rates um, for different uh, time periods. So for example, it might have a semi-annual rate uh, and they could have a monthly rate as well, uh, but those rates differ. They're not equivalent to an APR, the given APR that the bank would have, right? Um, so uh, obviously it's, it's, it's an advertising thing as well. So normally if you're doing a semi-annual rate, the banks will offer a semi-annual rate, it will be half the APR. It will be half the APR, but of course that is not equivalent to an APR of 4.5. Uh, percent. Uh, okay, so that's how we calculate our monthly uh, rate given the annual percentage rate. Now this uh, next one was, uh, you were given the monthly rate, which was kind of unusual. Uh, um, it was kind of unusual and I know it uh, confused some students. Um, so this time we have a different bank that's going to charge him an interest rate of 0.35% and we want to find correct to three significant figures the APR that is equivalent to a monthly interest rate of 0.35%. So this time uh, we know the monthly rate, but we want to get the uh, APR. So we're pushing forward again a euro over 12 periods this time uh, at a rate of 0.35%. So our, our P, of course, we'll take it to be one. Our, we know our I here now, our monthly rate, and we're, uh, we have 12 compounding periods, 12 months. So plugging into the formula again, we get our future value to be 1.042818 when we uh, calculate it out. So uh, we've invested one euro and after 12 months, it has amounted to 1.0428. Um, so in other words, then it has made, um, uh, it has increased uh, by 4.28%. Uh, so the APR then is 4.28%. So it has gone from one euro to 1.0428, which is an increase of 4.28%. Uh, again, that was a, an, unusual, an unusual one where they're asked, given the monthly, and asked to get the APR. Okay, so <clears throat> let's have a look now at some of the, of the problems involving uh, these um, geometric series. Um, so uh, I, again, we're not going to derive the, form, uh, the formula. Um, so we're going to look now at a mortgage, um, uh, particular mortgage, and see how we uh, calculate the uh, monthly repayments. So, <clears throat> first of all, <clears throat> just to 
so, um, to make sure that they understand what a mortgage is and the way I look at a mortgage is in, as an investment by uh, the bank or the lending institution, okay? Uh, so the value of the amount invested is equal to the value of the loan. So they're one and the same uh, thing. So the bank are looking at the 250,000 or whatever it is as uh, an investment, whereas the person who's taking it out, of course, is looking at, his loan, uh, uh, looking at it as a loan, but they're one and the same uh, thing. Um, so how does it work then? Well, the lending institution or the bank will receive a stream of equal uh, payments. So that's important, it's equal payments. That's what amortization is all about. They will receive a stream of equal payments at equal intervals, which the intervals are usually months, um, equal intervals of time over a fixed period. And the sum then of all the present values of the payments, right? So the sum of all the present values of the payments that uh, the um, person who's taken out the loan, the sum of all the present values of the payments that he or she will make is equal to the value of uh, the loan. So here are the, say, so for example, let's say the, the payments are A euros, okay, they're all equal. And then uh, the value of the loan then here is the present value of all of those uh, payments. The present value of all of those payments gives you the value of uh, the loan. And again, we can sum that then using the sum to in terms of a geometric. Now, as I said, I haven't done it out, but it's, it's similar to the other two. And you end up with this amortization formula, which of course is in the, is in the tables. So the uh, value of the, of the payments then uh, is P times I present value of the loan by, by the interest rate by one plus I to the power of T all of one plus I to T minus one. Okay, A is the repayment amount, P is the amount borrowed, interest rate is the decimal as I, and the time is the number of compounding periods, which are usually months. So let's do the example from the same year. Uh, Donna borrow, borrowed 80,000 at a monthly interest rate of 0.35%. Right, the monthly interest rate now is 0.35%, uh, fixed for the term of the loan from bank A. The loan is to be repaid in equal monthly repayments over 10 years, and the first repayment is due one month after the loan is uh, issued. Uh, so this is your um, ordinary annuity. So calculate correct to the nearest euro the amount of each monthly repayment. So once you have the amortization formula, uh, these questions are straightforward enough. So we have our... Um, interest rate uh, is 0 0.0035. Now, if I can remember correctly, there were lots of mistakes made on that alone this partic that particular year because, um, of course, when they saw the decimal, they assumed they assumed uh, that that, uh, that that it was a decimal and it wasn't a percentage. So, of course, 0.35% is 0 0.0035 is a decimal. Um, 80,000 then was the value of the loan. And it's over 10 years, so in total then 10 times 12 is 120 months. So we've 120 compounding periods. And substituting into our formula then, we get the repayments um, as 817 euro and 59 cent. 817 euro and 59 cent. Okay. Now that takes us on to a kind of similar enough uh, problem. These uh, balloon payments, now this came up in 2019, which was the first time I think that it uh, uh, appeared. And we'll just have a look at the question. First of all, we have another couple. This time they agreed to take out a mortgage of 350,000 euro at a rate of 0.3% uh, per month. So we're given the monthly rate again, but as a percentage, uh, and they want to purchase a new home. So this loan is also to be paid back monthly over 25 years uh, and the repayments again due at the end of each month. And this time we are given uh, the amount that they're uh, paying back each month is 1,771 euro. Okay, so now after 11 years of repayments, the couple uh, receive a financial windfall and they decide to pay the remaining balance on uh, the mortgage. So they're um, 11 years, uh, they're paid 11 years, okay. Um, so that means there's 14 years left to pay and it's when they receive this uh, financial windfall. Now, um, the good thing about it, I suppose, this question was that uh, the students were actually stepped through it. It says write down a series, including <coughs> the first two and the last two terms. Now, important as well, 
look to answer the questions that they're asked because um, many times when you're writing out series you're inclined maybe just to write down the first one and the last one um, and of course they 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 step down a credit uh, for not including the second uh, and the second last so write down a series which uh, shows the total of the present values of all the remaining monthly payments due over the remaining 14 years of the mortgage um, and hence find out how much the couple will need to repay in order to clear their mortgage entirely and give the answer correct to um, the nearest um, cent. Okay, so how does it work? So the, their, their repayments are 1,771. They're paying that every month. They have 14 um, years to go as well. And uh, so in other words, there's 168 months left to, to, to pay. And the rate of interest is 0 0.003 as a decimal. So, um, so they have um, 168 months left. So how, um, how is that going to benefit them by paying it off now? Well, of course, these, all these, uh, these E's here, these 1,771s, 1, uh, it's the present value of all of those payments that they now owe, right? Because remember, time, time is money, as they say. Um, so they won't have the uh, they won't have the loan out over the remaining uh, 168 months. So they are um, they don't have to pay interest uh, over that period of time. So the present values of all these payments then becomes what's owed uh, at this point in time. So again, this is just a geometric uh, series uh, with the first term being that, and we know the. Um, uh, the rate or the ratio you're multiplying by one over one point zero zero three to get to the next term. So our ratio is one over one point zero zero three, and then you're filling it in to the sum to uh, n terms of a geometric. Uh, and that uh, when you fill that in and, and you evaluate, you get out two hundred and thirty three thousand four hundred and thirty eight euro and twenty five cent. So if they pay that now, uh, their loan is cleared. So that's the that's the balloon payment. And basically all it is, is just simply getting the present value of all the remaining uh, payments. Uh, and that uh, is what you need to fork out in order to pay off your loan before the term actually ends. Now, <laughs> again, this is a, a, an important one that I think that confuses students a little bit, uh, is the schedule. And it has been asked twice, I think. Um, um, so a schedule where uh, you uh, make out the uh, monthly interest that has due um, on it. You'll also have the repayments that you're uh, making, and you'll see the the actual debt uh, declining as the months go go by. Um, so this, I think, this question comes from 2017. Um, Alex has a credit card debt of five thousand. One method of clearing the debt is to make a fixed uh, repayment at the end of each month. And the amount of this repayment is 2.5% of uh, the original debt. Uh, okay, so the original debt was uh, 5,000 and uh, the payments, the fixed payments are going to be 2.5% of that. And then the question asks, what is that monthly repayment? Okay, so that will just be 2.5% of 5,000, which comes to 125 uh, euro, comes to 125 euro. Now, the next uh, part of that question then was the uh, APR charged on debt by the credit card company is 21.75% uh, fixed for the term of the debt. And uh, find as a percentage corrected three significant figures, the monthly interest rate that is equivalent to an APR of 21.75%. So we've covered this uh, already. Um, and we get the monthly interest rate as being 1.65%. Uh, uh, and as a decimal, of course, 0 0.016535. Uh, so that's calculating the monthly interest uh, rate. Now, here is our, our schedule, our table, and um, the numbers that you can see uh, on the table, the 5,000, which is the amount that was uh, outstanding at the beginning of the period, that was given in the question. Okay. Uh, now, they also gave uh, the balance, the outstanding balance at the end of the first month. And um, they gave you the amount by which the previous balance was uh, reduced uh, by. Okay. So remember now that the uh, payments are 100 and 
25, that was agreed at the start that the, that the person would make uh, monthly payments of 125. So we have a column there for fixed monthly payments. And uh, I suppose the, the, the sensible thing to do is just to fill that one up, first of all, because we know they're all going to be equal, equal payments of 125 euro. Uh, now, the next job then, and this is where the students get confused as well, I think sometimes is uh, calculating the um, interest, right? So the interest is always on the outstanding balance, okay? So the outstanding balance at this stage was 5,000, okay? And uh, the interest rate was uh, 0.0165. I think that's what we calculated uh, in the previous slide. So that's, we get that percentage of the 5,000. That gives us the uh, interest. And the interest comes to uh, 82.50. So the interest on the 5,000 that's outstanding uh, is 82.50. The fixed monthly payment, the amount that the person is paying back is 125. Uh, so out of that 125, 82.50 is interest, okay? And that then just leaves 42.50 left over from the 125. And that's all that comes off the balance. So you take the 42.50 then from the, from the 5,000 and that gives you 4,957.50. Okay, we come to the second year uh, now, or the second month, I should say. Uh, we now have an outstanding balance of 4,957, so we have to get the 0 0.0165 of that again. And of course, we're getting it of a smaller number now, so you'd expect your interest to be slightly uh, lower than that. And sure enough, it's 8180 this time um, of interest. Your fixed monthly payment is 125. So there's less interest involved now in the payment. So you would be hoping that, uh, well, you will have a bigger um, reduction in your balance than what you had the previous month. And that happens to be 43.20 uh, when you subtract the 81, 80 from the 125. And so we reduce our balance now by 43.20, giving us 4,910.30. And off we go again. They were asked for another month. Uh, 4,910, uh, we get uh, 0.0165 or whatever of that. And that gives us 8109. And you can see again that the, the interest is reducing because the balance is reducing. So there's more coming off the loan as the months go by. Uh, so this is a bigger reduction now on, on the balance. It's 4391 in comparison to the 4320 in the previous month. And then that finally gives us 4870 owing at that um, after the third payment. Um, Okay, so that's that's the schedule. Oops, sorry, uh, let's skip back there. Oh yeah, well, okay, so this is the this is the new bit. I didn't do this the last time out. Um, uh, the first order linear difference equations. Um, now the, it's a topic that's on um, the applied maths course, and um, it has applications here in in uh, martization as well. So that's why I decided uh, I decided to do it. So. If we, um, first of all, we just define what uh, these uh, linear difference equations are. So the ones that we deal with, or we're going to be dealing with are called first order linear uh, difference equations. And it's an equation of this form, right? So it's an equation that's defined, what's called defined recursively. Um, so yt and yt plus one are terms in this um, equation. The, yt plus one can only be determined if you know yt at the moment. That's uh, if you look at the uh, at the definition of it now, yt plus one is equal to a times yt plus b. Uh, we can get yt plus one if we know yt, but later on we'll see that we can actually find a closed form for this. So just to give a very simple example of it. So let's say this is a, an example of a first order linear difference equation. yt plus one is equal to three times yt plus 12. Okay, uh, so for example, if you wanted to get y2, y2 then would be equal to 3 times y1 plus 12. Or if you wanted to get, I should have started, I suppose, with y, I should have started with y1. Uh, so y1 would equal 3 times y0 plus 12. And normally we're given that initial condition. So the goal of this thing is to uh, find uh, yt in terms of y0 at the very end. So it'll become clear once we do um, an example of how this thing uh, works. Okay, 
Now, these did come up uh, years and years ago. Uh, uh, I can remember teaching this about 14 or 15 years ago. Uh, and this is an example from a Leaving Cert higher level. Now, the only difference here was that the ones that we did in those days were second order um, uh, difference equations. Okay, so you had to have uh, these three, uh, you had UN plus two, UN plus one, and UN. Um, so the, you, you needed three terms in order to, uh, or sorry, you needed two terms in order to determine the third term, whereas here you need only one term to determine, determine the next term. Um, and we had to solve, there was a particular way for solving those. You got a characteristic equation and you solved it, and then you were able to find um, a solution in closed form. Now, these are, uh, these ones are not as, as complex as those. So let's take an example. So here we have a difference equation. UN is equal to half of UN minus one plus three. So we have UN defined in terms of UN minus one. And what we really want now here is to, do, to get UN uh, just in terms of N, not in terms of a, a previous term. Uh, so in other words, it would allow us to get any term then without knowing the previous term. So that's basically the goal of these uh, difference equations. So let's let's start off. Now, if you look, if we just go back up to the question again, un is a half of un minus one plus three, and we're giving u zero as well. We're given what's called the initial condition. We're given that u zero is equal to 144. Okay, so in our solution, we just start off, um, u1 is equal to half of u0 plus 3, that's coming from our definition up here, u1 is a half of u0 plus 3, and uh, so u2 then uh, is going to be a half of u1, this is u1, we've determined it from here, half of u1 plus 3, which when we multiply out here now, we're going to come across a pattern in a second. When we multiply this out, you see you get a half by a half is a half squared times u0 uh, plus 3 by a half. So you're going to have 3 by a half. And you're also going to have plus 3. That plus 3 there. And then we factor out the 3. So you get a half to be squared times u0 plus 3 times 1 plus a half. So that's our u2. That's u2 half squared times u0 plus 3 times 1 plus a half. Now, we'll now find u3 and we'll see a pattern uh, emerging. So here you can see u3 is a half of u2 plus 3. And we already have calculated u2. So we just simply substitute that in here for u2. So you're going to get a half of a half squared coming from up above, plus half squared times u0 plus 3 times 1 plus a half plus 3. Okay, now multiplying in again now by the half, that will give you the half cubed times u0. And then we multiply a half by 3 here. So you have uh, 3 uh, by a half, 3 by a half, 3 by a half, that's a 3, sorry, 3 by a half by 1 plus a half plus three. And you see, when you multiply in your half, now you'll have a half here, and a half by a half here is a, a half squared. And then you factor out the three again, and look what comes up. You get a half to be cubed times u zero plus three times one plus a half plus a half squared. And so you can see the pattern is starting to emerge now. Okay, so for u three, we have a half cubed times u zero plus three times and this, of course, is turning out to be a geometric series. So it's three times one plus a half plus a half squared. And then following that pattern, we have our, our U3. So, I mean, you could write down U4 now without actually doing any calculations. Uh, if you follow the pattern, it's going to be a half uh, to the power of four times U0 plus three times one plus a half one plus a half plus a half squared plus a half cubed. And there's U4. And of course, uh, we can now generalize to UN. So UN then, and I think I have that on the slide, if I just remove this what I've just written. You can generalize now to UN. And um, UN, of course, is going to be a half to the N times U0, like U3 was a half to the cube times U0 plus three times one plus a half plus a half squared plus half cubed and so on up to a half to the n minus one. This is going to be one less than our power here, as you can see from the pattern up above with u3. 
<clears throat> so that's how you end. Um, so all we left to do now is to use our uh, sum to in terms of a geometric. And when we use our <clears throat> sum to in terms of a geometric, uh, you can see at half to the n times u zero, that's fine, plus three times. And then we're e into one minus r to the n all over one minus r. And we end up then with a half to the n times u zero plus six times one minus a half to the n. So now you have it in what's called closed form. You can uh, calculate any term uh, you wish in the uh, in the difference equation, um, or the, diff yeah, the difference equation. So we were looking, uh, the question asks us to get u8. So u8 then will be a half to the power of 8 by u0. u0 is 144. Uh, plus six times one minus a half to the power of eight. Now, um, I worked that out here somewhere and it comes to 6.5390625. I don't have it written on the slide, but that's, um, that's what, it, uh, what it comes to. Okay, so uh, with a bit of practice at, uh, at those, I know the uh, applied maths people will have to learn how to do this kind of stuff, but with a bit of practice, um, it's, uh, it's just following a procedure really, solving these uh, for start of difference equations. Now, in a minute, we'll see what the applications are to uh, what the applications are to uh, mortgages and mortgage repayments. So, before we do that, though, just a, uh, a run through the general formula because something interesting comes out of the general formula. Uh, you can actually solve the general formula as well uh, in closed form. So, we have y t is equal to a times uh, y t minus one plus b, where a and b are constants. Um, so we'll go about solving it now, like we solved the last one. Why? First of all, let's write down what y1 is. We write. We want to try to write everything now in terms of y0. So y1 is a times y0 plus b. So y2 then is going to be a times y1 plus b. Y1 is up here. So we're going to substitute that in here. So you get a times a y0 plus b plus b. Multiplying by a and you get a squared times y0. You're going to have an AB here plus B, so we can factor out B and we get B into A plus one. Again, just following the procedure that we did uh, in the last one. Let's do Y3 now. Uh, similarly, Y3 will be, you're going to sub, uh, substitute all this stuff, all this stuff uh, into this. So you're going to have A times a times all of this, you'd have A times all of that stuff up there, A squared times Y zero plus B times A plus one, plus the B then. And um, so Y three then turns out to be this, A, a cubed times Y zero plus B into A squared plus A plus one. And now you see your geometric emerging again. There's our geometric. Uh, so following the pattern, then yt is going to be a to the t times y0 plus b times, and then this geometric here. And then uh, we can just sum that using the formula for a geometric. When we sum it, we get yt is equal to a t times y0 plus b times, and then just summing that, summing it into the formula, plus b times uh, 1 times 1 minus a to the t all over 1 minus a. And then we can rewrite that then in this form. We can rewrite it in this form by multiplying in here by the B and uh, factoring out the AT, you get this. Now, the reason why I did this is uh, this, this number here at the end is called the steady state of the difference equation. It's called the steady state. And the reason it's called the steady state is if this A that we have here is less than one, are greater than minus one, then obviously as t gets bigger and bigger and bigger, that's going to approach zero. Um, so as that approaches zero, then the whole of yt approaches b times one minus a, um, and hence the name steady state. So that's the general solution. Now, this general solution, I suppose, we probably won't be using it um, in our um, we we'll probably stick with our amortization formula, obviously, because it's in the tables and so on. But that general solution is what we're going to use when we're solving um, the amortization problem. Okay, so 
let's look at a, a question so where we would apply this to mortgages. So a couple get a mortgage of 250,000 euro. The bank charges an annual interest rate of 4.5%. The loan is to be repaid in monthly installments, equal monthly installments over 20 years. And the first question, the usual question, of course, find the equivalent um, monthly interest rate. And the next question then uh, is where we apply our difference equation to the mortgages. If DN is the amount of the mortgage owing after N months, show that DN is 1.00367 times uh, DN minus 1 uh, minus A. So in other words, it's 1.00367 times the amount owing the previous month and take away the repayment, which makes sense. And we, we'll, we'll explain it in the next slide. Uh, and then once we have uh, explained it, then we need to find A to the nearest euro. In other words, find uh, our uh, monthly repayment. Okay, so the first part of the of the question is to get the equivalent monthly rate. So that's fairly straightforward. We've done three of them already, I think. So the monthly interest rate is 0 0.00367. 0 0.00367 is the monthly rate. 250,000 is the amount that's uh, borrowed and it's uh, borrowed for 20 uh, years. So now we need to explain DN uh, is the amount of the mortgage owing. It's the debt after N months. And we want to show that dn is actually equal to that, or explain why it's equal to that. And if we can explain why it's equal to that, then obviously uh, this, is a, this is a first order linear difference equation, and we can solve it uh, and hence find uh, a. So, uh, so here's the explanation. In month n minus 1, dn minus 1 is old. At the end of the month, before a payment is made, 1.00367 times dn minus 1 uh, is owed. That's just using our future value uh, of the dn minus 1. Uh, and then when you make a payment, obviously, that's taken off the debt, and that's the amount that's owing after in months. So dn is equal to 1.00367 times dn minus 1 minus a. So now let's move on and let's um, solve our equation. Um, so we're going to use the form that we derived there a minute ago. Um, so we have yt is equal to a times yt minus 1 plus b, and we'll fill into that. Now, uh, you can see here that the 1.00367 corresponds to the a, and the a here corresponds to the b in our formula. So remember, this was our formula. AT times Y0 minus uh, B times 1 minus A plus B times 1 uh, plus B all over 1 minus A. Um, so Y0, of course, is what's owing at the start. Uh, that's the amount that you've, you've borrowed. Okay. B is the A, and uh, the A here then is the 1.00367. Okay. So we substitute that in. So here is our. Our time period, of course, is over 20 years, so that's 240 months. There's our 1.00367 to the power of 240. Here is our Y0, the debt that's owed at the very beginning. Okay. Plus A, our repayment. A, our repayment, all over 1 minus 0 0.00367. Just take, we're just filling it into this formula here. Uh, times, uh, close the bracket on that, and then minus the B over 1 minus A, or B, remember, is capital A, all over 1 minus 0 0.00367. So that's our, uh, our difference equation. Uh, and we're looking for A. So you might say, where do we, we have solved our difference equation, really. So how, where do we go from here now that we have solved our difference equation? We still haven't found A. But remember, DT, the debt at the very end, the debt at the very end is going to be uh, zero after the 240 uh, payments have been made the debt is zero you've paid off your you've paid off your loan okay now I just simplified it uh, there in the next line uh, but dt is equal to zero when the debt is paid off so all this comes to zero so you're just left with this then you're left with this okay and in the next slide then we will write a in terms of the rest okay where is it Okay, so this is equal to zero. 
So the dt is equal to zero. So here we get this is equal to zero and we'll be able to get a and l from that. Um, so uh, transferring to the, or transposing to the other side, we get a times that is equal to that. And then um, giving us a equals this thing here. And of course, you probably recognize now, this is what uh, we would be filling into our amortization formula. There's our P, there's our I, and there's our one plus I to the T, one plus I to the T. And then underneath, of course, we one plus I to the T minus one. So that gives us our, um, that gives us our uh, repayment. Uh, so we've amortized the loan, in other words. Now I haven't worked it out, but as you can see, we know it's, it's correct because it's in the same form as if we had filled it into the uh, amortization uh, formula. Now I suppose uh, <clears throat> I should say this, of course, that this this can't uh, this won't be examined in the, on the maths, but it will be it will be examined in the uh, applied maths course. And I suppose the thing that I, I liked about it uh, is if we go back here to the explanation. Um, we just go back for one second to the explanation of of um, sorry now just go yeah this explanation I think this is it's probably easier to understand this um, explanation uh, even though the calculating is a bit more uh, difficult but I think it's easier to understand this explanation of the difference equation why dn is equal to that that um, you know they they can appreciate that more than uh, explaining to them that it's the um, it's like an investment by the bank. That's what a, a mortgage is. Uh, whereas this uh, gives you a step by step um, um, explanation from month to month of uh, the debt that's owed. Um, okay, so that's the that's the difference equations and. Um, as I said, it's on the applied maths course, so the, the applied maths people will have to know how to how to do this. I presume they'll be asked to solve a difference equation. Yeah, uh, they're going to hit a bit now, but uh, they'll, they'll be asked to solve a difference equation and then apply it to a mortgage um, to a mortgage repayment. And um, I think, as you saw, that uh, pretty much finishes me. Um, uh, so thanks again for your for your attention. I, I presume some of you have saw a lot of this before. Uh, but um, except for, of course, the, the, the difference equations, but uh, thanks again. Thanks very much, Mike. That was fantastic. Uh, really brilliant. Thank you. Um, are you open to taking some questions if there are any? If there are any questions, yeah. If anybody has anything. So feel free to use the chat or to unmute yourself if you'd like to ask. Yeah. Right, I think we can take that as a no. Um, yeah. So thank you all very much for your time this evening. We will be in, in touch soon uh, with the final details for the Team Maths competition. We're hoping to run it on Friday the 28th of January, but we're hoping that it will be during school time. It will be online, um, but we will confirm that in the next while. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Mike, particularly for a great presentation and have a safe and happy Christmas, everybody, and mind yourselves. Thank you. Thanks, Kiran. Thank you.